thought the media commitments were going to be more strenuous than they were, and um, actually, like some of them have actually been pretty enjoyable. So, some of it, I'd rather be at my room. I'd rather be just relaxing and recovering. But you know, I, I think that just understand it comes with the territory. Right. Is that kind of a, a new feeling for you then? Because at first it sounded like you, you didn't. You know, you were going to hate it completely. Well, when I did it for the Olympics, like. I think that they like very much overdid it. Like maybe the Olympics is different, and then um, women's wrestling was just coming out. You know, it was the first year that they had it in the Olympics, and so they like really, really bombarded us with it. So I think that maybe like never again in my life will it ever be the extent that it was before. So I was imagining it was going to be like that, and where I literally could not even sit down for a meal without doing an interview while I was eating. Like I just had no free time whatsoever, and so that was a little bit more difficult. And this has been. I'm more relaxed about it and they like they pack things together so they can do everything in a nice little chunk and then you're done the rest of the day so they really help you out a lot and, and i know that you've been uh you know very gracious towards ronda and what she did and, and the attention that she got and how it got women in the ufc do you think you know if you become champion that you could embrace that role where you're kind of the, the leader of the division and helping be uh, a trendsetter um i don't know like i uh, i'm not really sure how things are gonna pan out like i try not to think about what will happen you know, after the win, but um, really, I think that there are enough stars like throughout the entire division that some girls are going to create more attention and some girls aren't, and that I don't think it has anything to do with who is the best fighter and who isn't the best fighter. So I don't know if like a you don't need all of your champions to be like that when you have like a Chael Sonnen or a Ronda. You know, like they can generate attention regardless if they're a champion or not. But they don't sell a specific pay-per-view, right? If you're the champion, you would be the one that would have to sell the pay-per-views. I mean, it would seem like you would have to get behind it. Well, unless I fought an opponent that <laughs> liked to generate attention, and then they could, you know, do that. But, yeah, I mean, I'd have to do more media stuff, but I don't think that I would change who I was to sell a pay-per-view. You know, like, that's... I don't know. I just don't... I don't really, like, believe in that. And if that means that I'm not going to headline a pay-per-view, then... I mean, I, you got to pick your battles. What do you think the significance of this fight is having three Olympians but two medalists? And do you think it means anything extra for women's MMA to have two medalists going at it in a high-profile event? Absolutely. Um, it means that, you know, women's MMA is now having the best athletes in the world enter into the sport and be successful. You know, where I think that for, like, quite a few years, the men have been so like drawing upon more and more high level athletes to enter into men's MMA and make very deep dis, uh, divisions. And I think that you're, you know, witnessing the beginning of that for women. One little follow up to that. There's still some people that, you know, think of MMA as like a barroom brawl and all that. And do you think that your fight will be able to show those people, the skeptics that remain out there that haven't become convinced by MMA because, hey, these are not only just, you know, great athletes, but they, they were good enough to win Olympic medals that maybe MMA is something that they should look at? Um, I, I hope that that would do that. Um, we view it as, you know, very much a sport rather than something like you have to be extremely skilled to do the things that we do under that kind of pressure. You know, like it, I've been in fights, so I know there's a huge difference between, you know, something that is controlled and has a commission and has, you know, a uh, referee and judges and protects people rather than something that is out and there's, you know, like anything can happen in a fight. You can lose your life. So it's, it's a huge difference between MMA and that. And, but sometimes I think some of those skeptics, like they, they make that decision and they never look back at MMA. So no one can really change their mind because they don't want their mind changed. They don't want to explore it more and understand it more. Mentally, you seem to be very composed and ready. What has seemed to be the biggest challenge for you this week, if anything? Um, I think that it's the same thing that was always uh, with my wrestling. The biggest challenge is staying healthy. Like, I, <coughs> I like to work hard, you know? And, like, if you work hard in MMA, MMA is a sport that is designed to do damage to people. Like, so when you go in and you go hard with your teammates, you know, it's, I mean, it happens, you get hurt. So, you know, they, everybody has been like really pushing me, really going hard, but also being conscious not to like tear my knee or, you know, something like that. And this year, I mean, sorry, ahead of this fight, where have you really been training for uh, the fight? I know sometimes you go to TriStar, sometimes you work with uh, Marcelo Garcia. Uh, what has been the major focus and where have you really been working on that? Uh, I've gone up to uh, Marcelo Garcia's. I think that he is an unbelievable grappler. I don't think anybody can, you know, <laughs> 
uh, argue about that. And then his team, like he has some excellent grapplers, you know, that are underneath him. And so like they have like a really great team up there and they're all very competitive and very open to helping anybody out who wants to get better. And then a lot of it I've done at home. Like I've, I have, uh, you know, people that I've flown in that are very good at what they do. And so they, I had more people come to me and that also has been to help me with like the media and help me relax and be close to my family. Any particular specialist that you've brought in to really help you prepare for Rhonda? Uh, yeah, but I don't really feel like revealing that. So, <laughs> sorry. I know I'm like the media nightmare because I'm like, yes, yes I have, but I'm not gonna tell anybody. But no, I'm, I like to be private about my training. I like to, you know, like, you know, do things the way that I feel like they should be done, you know, working things my way, and I don't know, like, I don't really, I'm mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> what Did you watch the, the video that Rhonda, uh, former judo coach, put out where he's showing how to beat her arm bar? No, oh yeah, yeah, I saw that one, um, and I've seen, like, there's there's other little ones, and it's just basically, like, the, the jiu-jitsu community and, you know, like, other community is they're responding to, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, she does this and how do you beat it? Because they don't want other competitors to do that to them. So it's really more like a, if one person like raises a level and shows you a counter, then, you know, like everybody learns the counter and then you develop a series off of that. So that's, that's the evolution of every sport. What about the pressure that, uh, you know, you've been in the Olympics under the spotlight. I mean, all of that should help you because Rhonda's been in, in the spotlight before, but a lot of people come in, they get a little bit taken back by all the attention, but you have to, you're used to that, so. No, absolutely. Like, i um, used to, like, almost all the situations that I'm going to be facing, large crowd, uh, you know, a lot of the media now, like I said, it's been even a little bit less than what I anticipated. Um, I'm like also a super competitive person, so every time I step out there, like I really am, all of my pride is on the line, you know, so it's <coughs> always important to me, like every single fight that I fought, amateur or pro, I've felt that pressure, you know, being an Olympic medalist who comes into this sport, people automatically think that you have to be great at things, you know, so I felt that pressure from the beginning. I thought everyone's looking always, of course, with Ronda with the arm bar, your, your wrestling, your specialty, I mean, but when you get her down, how are you going to counteract that? That you, you know that that move. Oh, I'm just going to cross my fingers. No, <laughs> I've trained a lot, and you'll see in the fight. <laughs> so, what's your daughter's understanding of what Mummy's up to this week? Well, she knows that um, she just knows that I, I came, that I'm on a trip, and then I'm away. And then if she sees me on TV, she's like. Oh, there's mommy. She's smiling at me because I look at the camera and smile. Yeah, she's smiling at me. And she she just thinks it's normal because she sees me doing the same thing that she like comes to all my practices and you know like she sees me hit the bag and she'll put little gloves on and hit the bag like look at her, like she's adorable. And where would she be Saturday night? She'll be with my best friend in North Carolina. Watching on? Um, I think she actually probably will be watching. Like, uh, she my best friend has a couple daughters too, and they all like love to watch me compete. So. Well, I don't know because when we first, uh, she was in a different weight class than me. So, you know, from the beginning, she was at 145 and she competed even heavier than that in the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was, um, for me, it wasn't like optimal. It was more like I literally can't get a pro fight. So, like, whatever my manager came to me, I was like, yes, I'll take it. You know, like, anything they threw at me because I just had to get something going. Like, I had girls that were, um, you know, really tough, and they had like 15, 20 fights, and they're just like, yeah, I'll fight her, I don't care, and they and they were fine with it, but no commission would allow somebody who was O and O, you know, even with my background, if you're O and O, they think that you're, you know, like they try to avoid, you know, padding people's records and stuff like that, so they wouldn't even allow people to fight me. I had to find somebody else who was like, you know, like three and O, five and two, or something like that, you know, but then the girls who were like that, they're like, I don't wanna go out and fight this girl, <laughs> you know? So I was like, for nine months, I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get my career going. This is crazy. Do you gather any feeling from the fans being that maybe you've only had the one UFC fight that you're being underestimated? And what's your response to that? I don't know because I haven't really, like, I don't check in to see what the fans think or feel. And I think that's just, like, a wrestling habit. I just really don't 
care as much, you know, like the people who know me, they, they know, like a lot of the fighters that I've gone and I've trained at different gyms, they know, but even if they didn't, like if I came out of nowhere, I know and that's all that matters. Like, especially in the cage when you're out there, it's just you. I've had a couple journalists who followed your wrestling career very closely said, I know Sarah, if she's in the arm bar, she will not tap. That's the kind of person that she is. Do you think that's an accurate assessment that under no circumstances are you, is that an option to you? No, um, they're basically attesting to the fact that, you know, like I'm, you know, like in wrestling and especially too, like a, one of my qualities is toughness. But um, I don't feel like that. I feel like the object of the sport is to not get to those positions. That's where you win. But if you get there and if somebody catches you and they get the better of you, you know, I don't feel like there's any need to be an idiot. There's no use losing and being injured. And that would be if it was any other, you know, submission also. Like, I don't, I don't look at it as somebody is like, oh, so brave and tough that they now have to get a surgery and they lost. Like, that's, that's kind of foolish to me. Like, there's, there's toughness and then there's foolishness. My whole, everything that I've been training for is to not get caught in that position just as much as when I was wrestling. It's, it's not like I'm going to, you know, like not acknowledge if somebody pins me or something like that, like let my arm get broken or whatever in a, in a wrestling move. The object is not to get there, you know, like that's how you win. Like I'm not, I don't want to just not lose. And does that make preparation any more like difficult or, or easier because you are so focused it would seem if you're fighting Ronda Rousey mm -hmm. on that one technique? Um, it, it, I think it makes it easier, you know, okay. to like know, it's very known of the, of the solid threats that she has, you know, like sometimes it's a little bit harder if, like when I, I was competing before, if you wrestled someone who was, it was completely unknown, you had to figure out on the fly what their go-to move was, and sometimes you were on the tail end of it, so, um, I always liked knowing the opponents I was wrestling, having a little video footage on them, like that helped me. So I'm sure a lot of people are interested in seeing um, what happens when you guys clinch up. Can you talk about the your wrestling versus her judo and how you think that will play out? Well, um, I think that, I mean, like, we're all waiting to find out, you know? Like, because I don't care how many times you simulate it in practice, like, it, not, nobody's going to know until it actually happens, you know? But, um, like, I've had a lot of hand fighting, a lot of practices where, you know, like, it's controlling ties, being in the right places, you know, having your hips in the right place and things like that. But that's just standard wrestling too. It's just a slightly more upright stance. So, you know, I think that if we had a gi on, I'd be in a lot more trouble. Since we don't, I'm super familiar with that area. Well, I was wondering what your reaction if you heard. Rhonda said she thought she had the best striking to win the MMA. I was wondering if you looked at her striking and if you would agree with that or what, how would you assess her striking level? Uh, she also said that she thinks she could be Cain Velasquez, so <laughs> I don't know. I just don't really take comments about what people assessing themselves very seriously. <laughs> what have you seen out of, out of her striking, though? It seems like everybody, all they're talking about is the judo versus wrestling part. I mean, this is a fight. Striking could come into play. Do you see her striking based only upon closing distances and, and clinching with people, or do you think she goes out to try and hurt people? What have you seen in the strikes that she throws? I think that um, in a lot of the fights, it, they are the jabs used to close the distance, you know, like it's not really meant to, to do as much damage, and I think that she tried to like broaden that a little bit more in the last fight with Misha, like I don't know, and she and she threw some kicks and stuff too, so I think that that's something that she's trying to expand more, and I just always have felt like I wanted to expand my striking on the way up rather than be at the top and then taking, you know, bringing something in, in untested to a title fight is a dangerous thing to do, I think. Do you think you'll be more comfortable on your feet? Or are you going to be actively <coughs> looking? I know you can't give away your game plan, but you, you'll, you'll be happy if it's standing, if it's on the ground, if you're on top of her, when your submission, ground and pound. All areas. All areas. Like, yeah, I think that if you want to be the title holder, you have to win every area. Yeah. You know, like you can't have some huge hole. So you have to be great on your feet and win the striking battle. You have to be, you know, win the throw slash takedown battle and you have to win, you know, on the ground. I mean, there's just, otherwise you leave it up to chance. So you're looking forward to testing all aspects, standing, yeah. wrestling, everything. I mean, if I can win in the first minute with a knockout, I'm yeah. not going to be like, oh man, I wasn't tested, you know, <laughs> but uh, no, I'm, I feel good and comfortable, comfortable and happy with all the areas. What exactly would being a champion mean to you? Because it seems like you don't really care about the money, you don't really care about the fame, that sort of thing. So what would it mean for you to be a champion? 
Um, reaching my goals, you know, uh, taking something that I set out for myself, you know, four, four and a half years ago, and, you know, like reaching the pinnacle of the sport. And that's something that, like, it's a lot of it is like that I enjoy the journey. I love learning how to be a better striker. I love learning how to be a better grappler. And like all of those things, like I wouldn't trade any of those days and all the training and the hard work. But you know, at the end of the day too, like I, I like to display it. I like to say, this is what I've been working on and here's me doing it, you know, at the highest level when it counts. Sarah, can you talk about how much you think her opponents, is it? Ronda's technique that is superior, or do her opponents make a lot of mistakes that you feel like you can capitalize on? Um, I think that, you know, like some of the people that have fought her before have, you know, like um, gotten a little bit flustered or just, you know, like hesitated or, you know, like gotten, you know, like out of their comfort zone and, and that cost them, you know, where she is like constantly keeping the pace fast, you know, so, but it's also like she's putting them in positions where if you are someone who can, you know, take people to the ground and be on the top, you know, you're already starting in a very good position. So, like, they're, the fact that they haven't done as much throw or takedown defense already starts them, you know, a step below. And it's easy to build a lot of momentum off of that. What was your take on the fact that she took the fight with you before she even beat Amicia? Is that, you know, just confidence in herself, or does it, you think it reflects on you in any way that, you know, she's agreeing to take another fight before she won the previous one? No, I think that, like, as the title holder, I think that you, I mean, I don't think you have as much of a choice, you know, like, I really think that they design the fights, and it's not like you can say, no, I'm not going to fight that person, you know, so, like, I think that, you know, it's understood they're building people to fight you in good fights, and, like, really what she was agreeing to was the timeline, you know? Would you, I mean, well, what do you think of that timeline? Because that seems a little crazy. If Dana came to you tomorrow and said, Sarah, we want you, if you win, to defend the title, and... April in Baltimore. Are you down for that, or do you think you know you need more time to prepare in a camp? I don't. I wouldn't need more time to prepare in a camp because I train year round, and I wouldn't need more time for an opponent because, like, all the top girls that would be title contenders are. I've already had them on my radar. I know who the good, strong threats are. You know, like, if you want to win things, you don't only look at people two months beforehand. You know, like, you should be training for them all the time. How long have you been training for Ronda? Uh, since she's been the champion of Strike Force, like 2002? Yeah. Or 12? 12. 2002. <laughs> Dang, that's, it's a long reign. Yeah. <laughs> 2012. But I mean, it's you look at who, who's number one. Like, before that, it was Misha. Before that, you know, like, whoever, before that, Marlus, you know? So, like, it just seems natural to me. If you want to be the number one person, there that's where the bullseye is right there. Yeah.